Hello and welcome to Moment of Clarity. This is the viewer question episode. We're going to go through a bunch of your uh, questions and topics you have left in the comment threads. Um, I will list the winners of the comedy special download at the end of this episode. If you want to be entered to win that, just uh, leave a comment and you get entered to win my stand-up comedy special. Okay, let's get going here. Ruth Allen, your question was, what do you think is a good response to the horseshoe theory pushers claiming Bernie and Trump supporters are the same? Um, I'd, I'd, I'd say a good response is uh, you're full of, of mountains of shit. Just mountains of shit. So horseshoe theory says that, like, you know, you get far enough to the right, you get far enough to the left, and they curve back around and then you can work together and do things like you're the same people. That's that's my that's my. I think I'm I think I've shrunk it down a little, maybe a little deeper than that. But that's my view. Of, that's my take on it. I think it's I think it's horseshit because just, so. Look, Congress does this all the time, right? They decide they can work together on something, and sometimes it's for competing reasons. Um, uh, what was a good example? Uh, there was there was one recently, but I, I can't remember it off the top of my head. But anyway, so I'm not saying you couldn't vote for the same thing because you you know uh, Donald Trump wants to pull out of a certain country because he uh, uh, you know wants our uh, I don't know he he believes we're wasting our military there and he wants to put it somewhere else or whatever the fucking reason is he might have you know he wants a good example is peace with North Korea right he wants peace with North Korea. I want peace with North Korea. He wants it because he wants to be viewed as this benevolent dictator. And, you know, he, 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 he thinks it'll probably get him a Nobel Peace Prize or some shit. And, you know, the, the, it's, it's all ego-based is why he wants peace with North Korea. But I don't give a shit why he wants it. I want peace with North Korea because I don't want to be on a nuclear fucking brink for the rest of my goddamn life. We should be at brink of nuclear war, and and further, furthermore, we're fucking killing North Korean people. Yeah, how, how much do you hate the average North Korean? If a North Korean, you know, a 14-year-old North Korean girl was sitting across from you, you're going to be like, fuck you, you're North Korean. How about a baby? You're gonna, if, there was a, if they sat a North Korean baby in front of you, you're going to be like, you motherfucker. Oh. No, those are the people that suffer, right, from our sanctions, from our cutting off the food. So that's why I'm for peace with North Korea. So you can agree on an issue, but does that mean I should be promoting Trump and acting like Trump is some kind of savior because I happen to agree with him on North Korea? Uh, no, no. He's a fucking racist, all right? And I will endlessly point out how the two-party system is rigged, how they're both pro-corporate parties, how men, much of the stuff that Trump does, like the bombing endlessly and the, the uh, hands-off Wall Street, unfettered Wall Street, and, and uh, unfettered prison industrial complex, and all of this stuff are racist policies, like our prisoning system, like our uh, bombing of non-white countries. That, but that's been going on for a long time. That ain't no Trump idea, all right? Trump did not arrive and invent our racist policies. But that does not mean I'm going to celebrate him because I happen to agree on North Korea. So if, uh, if, if, if supporters of the horseshoe theory think that I'm going to go find all the Trump voters and say, hey, high five, let's hold hands and walk down the street, fuck you, all right? I disagree with so much of the Trump worldview. And on the things that I agree on, I will support that issue. I supported pulling out against the, of the, of the Trans-Pacific Partnership. And he did that. He did it for his, a combination of his own ego and voters. He did it because he trashed everything Obama did. So because Obama came up with the TPP, he was like, yeah, I don't like the TPP. And then he pulled out of it. But guess what? He's trying to create the TPP again. He's trying to, he wants to give corporate giveaways. He fucking loves corporate giveaways. That's what the TPP is. So he didn't do it for the right reasons. But if it's an issue I agree on, then I will side with that issue. But I'll be goddamned if I'm going to go around, you know, rubbing asses of people in MAGA hats. No, I only rub the asses of people I fully agree with. And even then, 80% consensually. Leroy Uvrard, uh, uh, Leroy, Loa, maybe it's Loa. 
uh, or Leroy. Instead of a guaranteed minimum income, I would rather see a shorter work week and a livable minimum wage. There is dignity in working and being able to support a family. Um, guaranteed minimum income. Is that not what a minimum wage is? All right. Well, maybe I'm confused on that point. But anyway, let's, let's get to your larger point. You'd rather see a shorter work week. Uh... There's dignity in working and being able to support a family. Um, I agree that there's dignity in working and being able to support a family. That is that is wonderful, and that's how it should be. People should be able to support their family because uh, we have that ability. We are still one of the richest countries in the world, and the fact that we act like we can't house and feed everybody is a fucking joke, a uh, fucking horror show, honestly. And, and so, yes, that's true. But I think the I, that, that, that catchphrase, the dignity of work, I think it's been used to push people into jobs they hate for most of their lives. And I think that we could find a dignity in work that is much, much better. That is, people are able to at least somewhat follow their passion, or at least able to somewhat do what they want with their lives. And... We should have communities where that dignity of work has to do with helping out your community, not just enriching a, uh, a CEO somewhere. So there are massive flaws with our with our system, and I agree with you on the shorter work week. I mean that that see that's the problem with capitalism is that for every time saving from technology, the savings of time, the savings of money, none of it goes to the worker. Zero. Zero goes to you and I at the bottom. It all goes to fucking CEOs at the top. And that's why they're making 200, 300, 400 times what their average worker is making. And when people say, oh, well, they work pretty well, CEOs sure do work hard. Yeah, do they work 400 times harder than your average guy on the fucking docks? Then your average guy or woman or, or, or child, depending on which country you're in, uh, in a mine shaft somewhere, uh, do, are they work 400? Even if you wanted to argue they are working hard, which most probably aren't. Even if you wanted to say, you ever watch Mad Men? They're not working that hard. They're sitting there with scotches. Uh, not, not to malign scotch. They, but are they working 400 times? No, no, not at all. So the idea that they're working that hard is fucking bullshit. I gotta move on here to the next story. Because uh, I, I drag out my answers a little too long. Craig Bartell says, if you, uh, if you had the ability to change the criteria of what is taught in school, including higher education, what would you add or subtract from the education system? Okay, well, I would, I, I would make it all underwater basket weaving. Every last class... You could take it uh, deeper levels of water, more intricate weaving. Um, no, I, yeah, there's, there are some, I mean, I think a lot of it can come down to the, te especially in college I'm talking about, a lot of it can come down to the, the, the teacher and the way you're being taught, and, but I'm, there's, there's tons of uh, useful subjects out there. Um, so it's not that I want to, like, you know, take education away uh, but as we've seen, the humanities is just being wiped off the map, wiped off the map. And business classes are, have, you know, tripled, quadrupled, whatever it is. Because our system is, tr is basically crushing uh, the arts uh, of all types, uh, you know, painting, music. None of that has any meaning to our society anymore, for the most part. If you do that kind of thing, or you do stand-up comedy like I, you know, did... I did it for, uh, you know, 20 years and before getting redacted tonight, and I still do it, but I still tour. But, uh, you know, if you want to do something like comedy or something on a stage or act or something, for the most part, yeah, there's some rich people out there, but for the most part, you're struggling to make ends meet. It's a struggle. It's, it's considered you uh, chasing some kind of crazy dream. Whereas if you're doing a job that makes you miserable, that makes it, that enriches a CEO... That's considered a good, hard-working way to be. Good on you. Well done. So, uh, it, 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 I, I think some of that comes down to our education system. I, I actually, you know, I started off speaking about college, but I think more importantly, because college, you get to 
start doing some of the things you want to do. Like I, I liked when I got to start choosing my own classes and things. Not that I got much out of any of them, but, um, you know, cause like I wouldn't take away a subject like history. I would just change the type of history that's taught. So, uh, but to go to lower education, to go to, you know, the high school, middle school, elementary school, much of that is designed to separate kids from, Oh, you're the workers, you're the military and put the other kids in the more advanced, a few of them into the advanced side of things. Oh, you're the ones that are going to be kind of the running the things in our society. You are the higher ups. You're the management class. You are the fucking pawns and the cannon fodder. And, and they never say that, but it's kind of set up that way to, to separate the groups and to really, early on, you can, they, the, our schooling system will decide early on that, hey, you're a fucking, you are the, you are the pawns. You are the cogs in the wheel. Fucking get out of here. And they'll put them in the lower classes and they don't give a fuck about them. And, and it's designed that way to create uh, a system that is, uh, separates you very early. Um, and then it's also designed, here's the biggest thing I would take out, is it's designed to make you not be free-willed. It's designed, our education system in the you know, middle elementary and high school is designed really to teach you how to deal with boredom, the boredom of your future job. It's sitting still in a chair. I mean, honestly, as an adult, how long can you sit here like this? I can make it 35 seconds. But it's designed to tell you to do those things, to teach you how to be in a, in a class in rows, in neat rows. And, and what are the classes that are getting uh, shut out of schools and, 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 and defunded? It's music. It's art, right? It's, it's uh, you know, creative thought of various kinds, philosophy. Kids should, every high school should have fucking tons of philosophy classes. But that type of stuff is being uh, ended because it, it made for thinkers, it made for people that questioned, it made for you and me. If you had those classes, if you, if you took that in, if you, you know, started educating yourself in a creative way rather than in a, a structured, you're sitting in a fucking wooden desk and fucking sit there. there you can fucking hit with a ruler because it's still kind of okay to hit kids in our society. I like that. I like that we can still beat our, our children, for the most part. I mean, you don't want to go, you know, you got you to gotta do it with like an orange and a sock so you don't leave a bruise or something, but, you know, for the most part. For those of you who couldn't tell, that was sarcasm. I know some of you are like, I, why I never? Pearl clutching. Okay, got to speed up. I got to speed up. Uh, this is from Milena. To all Europeans, the headquarter of AFRICOM, oh, I did a segment on AFRICOM, which is our, uh, you know, military involvement in Africa, which has shown an increase in violence across Africa. To all Europeans, the headquarter of AFRICOM is in Germany. We need the U.S. Army out of our continent. Vote as left as possible. Uh, as she said, she's talking to Europeans. Uh, yeah, I didn't mention that in the segment, but that's very true, that a lot of our state, a lot of the U.S., Military is, is stationed throughout Europe. Uh, you know, Europe plays a major role in our U.S. military uh, empire. And we have bases all over the fucking place. So um, that, that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, if you're, if you're in one of these other countries, your country's not blameless if it's a U.S. ally and it's uh, allowing for this. But... Uh, you know, and I'd love to see more politicians in some of these countries say like, hey, we don't want to be a part of this. We don't want to be a part of bombing every 12 minutes. We'd rather you, if you're going to do that, you do that on your own. You, that's your thing. That's you go. That's your hobby. I know. No, I love you too, but that's just not my thing. That's for you. You go do that. I'll go do my thing. You, you do. You do your thing. I just like, I'd like to see them say that more. All right. Final comment here from Mr. Shiggity. I like it. The 13th Amendment was always full of loopholes by design, of course. He's, so he's talking about, I, I did a thing on prisons. Uh, well, actually, Naomi Caravani did a thing on prisons. I've done many things on prisons in the past, but it's, so that's, he's talking about prisons. Uh, 13th Amendment about slavery was always full of loopholes by design, of course. Slavery is technically illegal, but there are corporate loopholes everywhere. The bankers of Wall Street, um, so what he hasn't said yet is I don't think, is that his connection between prison and 13th Amendment is slavery is actually allowed in our prisons, if you didn't know that. Uh, our, our, when, we, when, we made, when we outlawed uh, slavery, we said, unless you're a prisoner, unless you're 
uh, you know, been been caught for criminality, then you, we can fucking make you a slave all we want. So the, the bankers on Wall Street glitter with glee when telling you about their big brain genius and how they use loopholes to have slaves in 2019. I haven't spoken to any recently who uh, glittered with glee, but I'll, I'll take your word for it. The U.S. Student Athlete Program in the, end, in the NCAA is another slave program. The school trades the young athletes, $120,000 tuition, for making millions off the merchandise. Athletes never see a dime. Genius, big brain, Neanderthal capitalism. Uh, so I'm going to disagree with you a little bit on this, Mr. Shiggity. Uh, I believe that the NCAA is incredibly unfair, and I believe that it actually has a lot of uh, uh, analogies to our old slave system. Um, many people, I, I think, including Colin Kaepernick, have pointed out that uh, you know it's it, it's a little bit interesting that we have owners of these teams, and of course there are higher ups at colleges as well, uh, trading mainly black athletes and telling them how to behave. And so many of those athletes have said, hey, I kind of feel like we're still in the plantation system here. Um, and I get what they're saying. But what there, there is a bit, I, I think that a, a, if, a, if a, a slave from the 1700s or, or, or first half of the 1800s could come and speak to you right now, I think they might say, you know, I'm a little different than my, my, my position in life is a little different than a football player. Uh, there, there may be some some analogies to make, but the player, the athletes in college are not doing that against their will. Yes, they're not getting paid, which is truly offensive. That the college makes millions and millions off of these athletes. Many of them are injured during their time in college and never make it to the NFL, or they just don't. You know, they may play very well, never make it to the NFL. And meaning they never see a dime of all this. And they didn't really get an education because if, guess what? If you're full-time on the football team at a, at a, at a big uh, school, you're fucking not doing much in classes because you're in fucking ice baths dealing with the fact that your knee is over there. Okay? Uh, your, your knee is in a separate bath. They're, they're going to cool it down and give it back to you in a minute, but there's some issues. Um, so, yeah, you're not even getting like a solid education. But not getting paid, truly offensive. It's not a the same as slavery, okay? Someone owning you as a piece of their property and whipping you if you don't work hard enough and never once in your entire life asking you what do you want to do, uh, that's a little different than playing football. But I understand your anger. I understand that uh, people should be angry about how much schools make from these players and often just churn them up into dust and then leave them on the side of the road after their college career because uh, many of them do not get to the pros. They don't get those millions of dollars. So, I mean, I don't even know what the percentages are. It's a tiny percentage that, like, get into the NFL. Uh, and many of them find themselves at 20. I mean, think about how young they are. Find themselves at 22, 23. Even if they graduated, they hardly paid attention in a class. Now they've got no skill other than catching a ball. But apparently they weren't quite good enough or quite tall enough or quite fast enough to make it into the big leagues. And now what do they have? It's pretty fucked up. Okay, uh, the winners, uh, and oh, by the way, I'm going to, I'm going to say the winners. If you want to be entered to win, uh, just leave a comment under this video. Um, I also want to say I'm performing in Los Angeles and Ventura, California. That's my first time ever to Ventura, California. Uh, I'm coming back to Los Angeles. There will be special guests on every show. Ventura, Graham Elwood will be opening. You know him from the Jimmy Dore Show in Los Angeles. Uh, Eleanor Goldfield, the co-host of my podcast, will be opening that show. And I'm also coming to Milwaukee and Madison, Wisconsin, Washington, D.C. We always tape with a live audience redacted tonight. All of that is at LeeCamp.com slash schedule or click the schedule tab at LeeCamp.com. The winners for this week are Max Power 1232 and... <laughs> Toke T Man uh, 1016. Um, and also, if you're watching this on the Redacted Tonight YouTube channel, please also subscribe to youtube.com slash Lee Camp 2. You can get all these videos a day or two earlier, and you can uh, you can you'll be signed up, you'll be subscribed even if the Redacted Tonight channel gets deleted, because judging by the mass censorship, it could happen any day. Uh, so please 
subscribe at Lee Camp 2. Click the little bell icon so that we can uh, alert you of our videos. And uh, check out my, my comedy special. Oh, I forgot to say, for those winners, for the two people that won, you have to email. Uh, they're going to put it on the screen. I forget what it is. Link something at protonmail.com. Um, and uh, I, I act like I have a whole team. It's really just Reese. Just so say thank you to Reese uh, when he puts this thing up here. That makes me look, you know, a little less dumb. Uh, thank you, Reese. And uh, what was the last thing I was going to say? Uh, leave a comment. Oh, LeeCampComedySpecial.com. You can go watch the first 10 minutes there. All right. Keep fighting.